Hey there, I hope you're having a fantastic week. Today, I'm here to talk to you about all things business growth, all things business building, and how coaching fits into that. So I always have four aims in any workshop or any speaking engagement that I do. And I wrote a book a few years ago. Here it is. It's called The Coach Approach, Five Principles to Build an Epic Business. And EPIC is an acronym. And so we have four aims. And the first one, the E stands for education. So we're here to do some education today. We'll give you some education. We're going to give you some valuable things that you'll be able to put into your business right away. But we'll also give you some opportunities to take advantage of further education moving forward. So the P stands for planning. I don't know any successful people who don't do planning well. We believe that planning and education are really the basics that a great business person needs to have in place before they can can scale, can can take it to the next level. And we believe if you do the business, the basics well, if you do education, if you do planning and some and a few other of the basics well, that you are going to find inspiration to commit to a path of excellence. So uh, the more the, the more you dig in, the more you work, the more you do the basics well, the better ideas you get, the better inspiration you get, the the more that you're going to be able to expand your business. So you find the inspiration and you commit to a path of excellence. Now, so that's our four goals. Now, one of the things I like for people to do in any situation like this is to find something, just find one thing that you can take action on in the next 48 business hours. So I'd like you to commit to do that. So we're going to be epic. We're going to do some education. We're going to do a little bit of planning. We're going to help you find some inspiration. And we're going to commit, get you to commit to at least one thing that you want to get done in the next 48 hours that will help move your business forward. So the first thing you got to do is you have to know, we have to talk about what is an actual business, like what is the goal? So our definition of a business is a commercial profitable enterprise that works without you. So we're looking for people who are on that path to build businesses, to create wealth, now, you don't have to go all the way down the half. We have plenty of clients who just like to have a commercial profitable business that works. They still want to work. In fact, I had a, uh, I have a roofing client who still likes to get on the roof every once in a while and help his crews do roofing. It doesn't mean he doesn't have to get on the roof anymore. He's got 70 employees. He, in fact, he, most of the time he, he can't, it would be a bad idea for him to get on the roof, but he can do it. So where we're headed is to a commercial profitable enterprise. That's the first step. That works to get the business to work without you. So let's. a lot of people don't know that there's actually a set path to build that business. So let me tell you what that set path is. And I'm just going to give you the overviews today. I'm not going to get into it. It's a whole other workshop that goes into what we call the six steps to build any business. But I'm going to give you the overview so you know that here is a set path to build a business. The first step is mastery. And this is the this is the level where you have a commercial enterprise. You got it, it, it every house needs a foundation, every business needs a foundation and the foundation is found in mastery. And there's four areas in mastery. The first area of mastery is called destination mastery. And if you don't know where you're going, how are you going to attract a team that, to come along with you? to to build that business with you. If if you're not clear on where you're going, if you don't have a vision for your business, if you don't have something that will enroll and inspire your your team members and and other people that are going to come to work for you, then how can you expect them to know what they're doing? So the first thing you have to have is destination mastery. And we work with clients on that all the time. The second thing you got to have, I believe is money mastery. Mastery is really all about budgeting 
knowing your numbers, knowing testing and measuring, those kind of things. So in money mastery, things like break-even mastery, KPI mastery, which is about measurements, key performance indicators, understanding your financial statements, getting them on time and understanding how they all work together, all three of them, and how to make great decisions based on your, your numbers, understanding your numbers, how cash flows through your business. You know, how, there's a couple of things I know. You got to know how to sell and you got to understand how cash flows through your business if you want to be successful in business. So these are the things we work on in Money Mastery. And then there's Time Mastery. I get people calling me all the time. I just don't, I simply just don't have any time. I'm being pulled in a hundred directions. So we work with you on how to get control of your time and then how to help your team get control of their time too, because guaranteed they're not working as efficiently and as hard as they could. And the last thing that we have, so we have, we have destination mastery, we have time mastery, we have money mastery, and we have delivery mastery. A delivery mastery is your basic level of customer service. And here's the challenge that we run into that. I see a lot of times like the owner or the, the management team does a great job with customer service, does a great job, but they don't actually know that it's being done the right way on down the line. They don't actually know what's going on in the business. They don't have the basic systems in place to ensure that their customers have a great user experience through the whole thing. So once you get your foundation in place, that's your that's your money mastery, your destination mastery, your time mastery, your delivery mastery. Then we move on to niche. Now in niche, this is where you get profitable because niche is about finding your uniqueness. Niche is about finding those things that are going to make you different. Now, generally, you can niche in three ways. You can niche horizontally, you can niche vertically, or you can niche by the processes that you use. And we help you figure out which one of those, or maybe all of them, are the best for you so that you get great results fast. We also, at the niche level, deal with what we call the five ways or the ch business chassis. And I'm going to do a separate thing on that. I'll come back to it. Just keep in mind that this is the place where you become profitable. So you've got mastery. You build the foundation, commercial enterprise. You become profitable at niche. Now, once you're profitable, and once you have some cash to put it back into the business, then you can start building out your systems. That's what leverage all about. The definition of leverage is is gaining an advantage. It comes from the root word lever, which which is an object where you can gain an advantage. And so leverage is how do we how do we multiply things in the business? And this generally comes through systemizing. This thing's you know fit you know, optimizing your efficiencies in certain level. And there are a hundred or so strategies that we use to help people do that and leverage. Right today, it's, it's, it's like I said, it's beyond the scope of what we're here to do today to get involved in leverage, but and and the details of it. But I'm just giving you an overview about now. Once you get now, the reason leverage is important is because we want the business to work. So this is a commercial proper enterprise. Leverage is where we get that works. We want the business to work, not necessarily the owners 24-7. So, and, and, and in wealth creation, where you're going to own multiple businesses and real estate and, and paper assets, you're going to need to put general managers in place. So you need team to manage the systems. Okay, so as you're working your way up the, the, the six steps, so you've got mastery, commercial, profitable enterprise, that works, and then we get without you. Now, what we want to do is create a business where the team runs the systems. Now, I know plenty of business owners who were doing well in one location or one region and went into another region or another location, and, it, and, and they ended up running back and forth because the business was too dependent on the people not the systems. Once you have great systems in place, then generally you can hire people to run the systems. 80-20 rule there, you got 80% of the things can be systemized, but 20% of them have to be humanized. So you build out a great team to run the systems. This is all about hiring, managing, leadership, and then you can put a general manager in place. Now, this is the place right here, about right here, where you can have that commercial profitable enterprise that works without you. So commercial profitable enterprise that works without you. Now, there's two more levels 
after you've got that. The first one is called synergy. Now, this is about models. This is about scaling. This is about rapid growth. And so what you've done when you've built this, you've built a prototype of a business. Now, it can be expanded depending on the model. Maybe you, maybe it's a better distribution system. Maybe it's franchising or licensing or one of those. But this is where it gets super fun, okay? Because this is where you take your model and you expand it into other areas. You, you gain synergy. You know, one and one equals three at this point because you're growing so rapidly. And then you get to the result stage, which hopefully is more time and more money. Now, what that means is that you can invest in other businesses and you can start beginning to create that wealth that we're talking about, businesses, real estate, paper assets. So that's the path we're on to build a commercial profitable enterprise. Just want to show you the model. Now, I'm going to show you the five ways because this is how you get profitable. Now, in any business, and I've looked at thousands of businesses over the last 17 years, they're built on a chassis. And this is the chassis. I'm going to go over it in detail with you. And we're going to put some numbers in there and show you how powerful this concept is. If you don't take anything away from today. I want you to take two things. Number one, you need a vision for your business or else you're never going to be able to attract anybody. And number two, this is how you're going to put money. This is called marketing leverage. Okay, so let me go over the basic formula and it works on all businesses. It's like it's like cars, like when when the, when the original horse was made it was made off of a volkswagen chassis we call this the business chassis so um and car manufacturers done that for you they've taken a chassis and built two vastly different cars the a long time for a long time the volkswagen golf was built on the same chassis as an audi r8 which is a supercar there's a it's there's numerous examples on and on and on the taurus and the jaguar there's a ton and ton of examples over the years of how car manufacturers have done this. So let's get into it. It's the same with business. So in any business, you have leads coming into the business. You market or however you're getting leads and they're coming into the business. Now you're not going to convert all of those to customers. So your leads times your conversion is gonna equal your customers, your clients, your patients, whatever you call them. All right, now, Every customer is going to buy, on average, a certain amount. Now, some customers will buy a large amount. Some customers have smaller amounts. It doesn't really matter. There's always an average. And then in most businesses, there's going to be some sort of repeat business opportunity, some sort of business to continue doing business with them. So you want to measure the number of transactions or the number of times they come back in a period of time. When you take your customers times your average dollar sale times your number of transactions, you will end up with your revenues or your sales, okay? And then what you get to keep, you multiply it by your margins, and that is your profit. Now, this is a marketing formula. I want to make that clear, okay? But this is how you grow cash flow by looking at these, what we call the five ways. There's five ways, right? Leads, conversion, average dollar sale, transactions, and margins okay now so and you say well which is more important the red numbers or the blue numbers well it's a trick question the the red numbers are important but they're outcomes if when somebody comes to me and says i, I want more customers i say great do you need more leads or do you need to convert more of the leads you already have you see how that works so let's put some numbers in and then let's look at the power of this thing so you're going to get Let's say in this business, you get 4,000 leads in a year. And let's say, for the sake of argument, that you can convert a quarter of them. You can convert 25% of them. So you're going to have 1,000 customers. And let's say, on average, that that customer buys $200 from you. And let's say they come back once. You know, one in 10 comes, you know, they, they come back once. So you get two times a year, you get a shot at them, Okay. And so when you multiply that out, 1,000 times 200 times 2, you get 400,000. And let's say it's kind of a service-related business, so it's a higher margin and you get to keep 25%, and you make 100,000. It's a good business. Now, let's talk about how do we make it better. So we start looking at the five ways. And what we're looking for in the five ways is 10%. 
We're not looking for 100%. I've gotten that before in some of these areas very rapidly, and I'll share some of those stories with you. But we're only looking for 10. So in this particular business, it gets 4,000 leads by doing a little marketing, by asking for referrals, by, you know, could we get a 10%? Could we get 400 more leads? Could we get a little more than one a day in a year, a little more than two a week? Right. Yeah, we could. It's pretty it'd be pretty simple to get to forty four hundred leads. Now, when we get to forty four hundred, then. Now, we're going to next thing we're going to work on is conversion rate. Now, conversion rate is how do we get more people to buy from us? Now, look, I've I've, I've used all kinds of strategies to get more leads. And I'll get into the order you should look at this, but we're going to go down through the math right now. But conversion rate, so let's just say some of the conversion rate strategies would be mapping out your sales process and actually seeing where you're losing clients or customers or prospects through the process. It could be sales training. We have a great 12-week sales training program now. It could be um, that you scripting. It could be that, uh, we bundle things together. It could be that we make, you know, that we have a way to add value. There's all kinds of ways. We, In fact, we have about 80 ways to increase, increase conversion rate. Through all these five ways, we have 289 different ways to increase each of these five ways. So to get more conversion rate. So let's just say we go out, we do some sales training. We give them some scripts. We make them up. Could we get this up 10%? The answer is, of course, and I'll give you the easiest way to get it up 10%, and that is to measure it. If you're not measuring conversion rate, measure it. It will go up 10%. What gets inspected gets respected. So 27.5% here, which let me get my calculator out here, and we will figure out what that is. So that's 4,400 times point. 275, that gives us 1,210 customers under our new situation. We're getting up 10%. Now, the average dollar ticket, 200. How can we get it up? What's the easiest way? Well, in most cases, you can raise prices in selective products or services that you have. And sometimes you can raise prices across the board. But that's not the only way. You can upsell, you can downsell. We got another 60 different ones. Now, my second ever client was a furniture repair manu uh, furniture repair manufacturer. And he was doing about uh, $388 average ticket. Basically, he was refurnishing grandma's tables, chairs, you get the picture. So when he would go out on a sales call, he would go out and he would just talk about the thing that they called him for to come have a look at. Well, we did two things. Number one, he was getting a lot of people that weren't buying. And so we added in a $150 charge just to come out, and which we reapplied back to the work if they did the work. Well, it cut out all the tire kickers, that in itself raised his conversion rate. It raised his conversion rate here, but his average dollar ticket went up and all he did was wander around looking at other furniture in the thing, in the place and saying, do you have any more else? And, oh, I, 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 we can fix that scratch on on the wall over there and various things like that. And and his his sales went up, his, his average ticket went up to 700 and it was around 740, which was 188% improvement in profit just off of one strategy. So yes, we can get the average ticket up just by bundling a bunch of other things. We got 60 or 70 of those strategies. So we're going to get that up to 220. And then now we're going to get them back. We're going to get one in 10 back more often. Now, the big companies are you see coupons all the time where you come in and you buy a hamburger or something and, and they give you a coupon to come back. Uh, you know, McDonald's used to have the Monopoly games and all that, which we got people to come back. You'd win fries and, of course, you had to buy a shake and a 
burger with it. So there's tons of ways to get people back. Um, but that is, but so we've got 60, 70 ways. Once again, I'm just giving you the quick overview. We can get into the strategies that'll work for you when we sit down and have a chat together. But so we're going to get one in 10 back pretty easy in this business. 2.2. So let's see what we have there. So we have 1210 times 220 times 2.2. That's 585, 640. We've got sales up to 585, 640. And any of those of you who are good at math know that that's a 46% improvement in sales just by getting 10% in each area. Remember, I got over, I got a hundred I got an eighty eight percent improvement in this one in one client. I've I've you know Joe, one of my the one of my clients, they were about twenty seven percent in their conversion rate. We got them to thirty five percent. You know thirty three percent improvement in in uh, in bottom line. Now let's look at margins. Now you're by the way, if you've raised your prices, then your average dollar sale is probably automatically going up. Now you can't do that in every industry. So how can we get our margins down? How can we get our margin percentage up? Well, you can look at it. I've, th I've done things like just go through everything in there. Look at your insurances. Look at every single expense that you have. Look at things that you can cut. Like in, in co like in COVID, I went back and looked at all the stuff I had signed up for that was automatically coming out of my bank account. Automatically coming out of my bank account. Pretty interesting stuff. And I was able to save several thousand a month just by cutting out those things that I wasn't using anyway. They were all apps, right? So we're going to get this up to 27 and a half percent. Not 35 percent, but 10 percent improvement. We got 585, 640 times 0.275, 161, 051. So that's pretty easy to figure out that that's a 61% improvement. So 161 bucks, 100, 161% improvement in profit. So we have 46% improvement just by looking at these five ways, these five levers. So it's a very interesting thing to sit down and do this in your own business and look at what could be. It's even more interesting to take it out five years. And we do this with our clients. We do five-year planning, and we look at, like, what would it be if we got certain amount improvement every single year? And where can we get more than 10%? Where can we, you know, where are we unlikely to get 10%? What are the things uh, where we can go? I had did one yesterday for a guy who was going from zero to over 100,000 in bottom line profit with three in three of these areas, just changing three of these areas. So that's the five ways. This is how you put cash in your business. It, it works in every business. If you don't know your numbers, you can't improve them. So let's get on to the next. Let me get on to the next concept. So in talking about coaching, you know, we work with people through these models. We work with people through the six steps. We work with people through the five ways to, to get more profit in your business. But we also work with people on stretching them a bit. Like, where is it that, where is it that you would like to go? So we look at, you know, we're looking for people that really want to climb the mountain. We're looking for people that want to do something epic, that want to do something bigger, better. So I've got a, a bit of a story that I tell about how, how this looks and what really happens in life. So a lot of times people are doing okay. So they're okay. They may be growing. They may be shrinking a little bit. But as you start in business or even in life, it doesn't really matter. At some point, you're going to run into an obstacle. It might be something you have to climb over or climb under, but a lot of times it feels like you've fallen in a hole. And so in the hole, you're actually in what we call survival. And But eventually, you get into survival mode. And, that, you know, when and you're in survival mode, you're making it happen. You're working as hard as you can. You're putting in tons of hours. We've all been there. You know, I've I, in some of our businesses, we some of my businesses, I've 
You know, I used to write checks on Friday and cover them on Monday. So that's survival mode. Okay. And, but you work your way out of it and you climb up here. And when you get right here, it feels like you're successful. But the reality is you've just reached okay again because you're back to where you were. That's just okay. Okay. And, but, but you see the mountain and you want to be successful and you want to climb the mountain. Okay. Great. So you start climbing the mountain. You're up here and you got steak, steak. And what I've, Come to learn that the top of the mountain is not success. Success is about halfway up the mountain. And by the way, in my opinion, success isn't good enough anymore. You have to go for epic. It's sort of like shoot for the stars. You might get the moon. You got to go for more. Well, then there's epic. Your first level of epic. I don't know what that looks like for you, but it, whatever your goals are, you need to set it. We know what we, we define success. Here's the challenge with success. You're still on the mountain. If you quit going or quit doing what it was that doing that got you there, you're likely going to slide back the mountain back down to okay. Okay. Then, but you reach epic. Well, you might only slide down to successful. Here's the interesting thing that I have discovered. And this is just a bonus is that, you know, there's always another mountain. And what happens is you reach epic and you may drop down here and then there's epic too. And there's even Epic 3. And to me, Epic is, you got an Epic business. You got an Epic life. Epic 2 is, maybe you got Epic businesses. Maybe you got Epic wealth. And then Epic 3 is usually some sort of thing where you're giving back, where you're really making an impact in the world. Now, you can give back all the way through all this. In fact, we really recommend it and almost required of our clients be to give back through this thing but i just want to show you there's more to business but you got to have the vision of where you want to be the impact the dent you want to make in the world and where you want to go so to give yourself now we run into a lot of people who some come to us somewhere in here by the way it doesn't matter where you come to us you can be at okay survival okay again success even epic because you know we're going to help you get there we're looking for people who want to be the best who want to be better you know you're good already you because you're in business you're doing great things we just want to help, help you make make you better so i think it's helpful for you to look at what these levels are and set some goals for where you want to get and this is a bit of a bonus this is just bill's philosophy on how to build a business so let me tell you how we work with businesses i just wanted to give you a little bit more of an idea of who we actually like to work with. I mean, we've worked with everybody in every kind of industry you can imagine. We've worked with builders, graders, home services, electricians, plumbers, um, stylists. Um, I've worked with um, former NASCAR crew chief who had a sign company. I've worked with a former LPGA tour pro who, you know, had a, driving range and entertainment kind of place, putt, putt, a bunch of stuff. Uh, you know, we've worked with um, 30, $40 million commercial contractors. You know, you name it, we've likely worked with it uh, in our business. And so we have three coaches in our business here at Action Coach Growth Partners. We have a great team uh, of, of marketers and and community managers and admin just we just had it's just a great group we're like we're growing our business too we're looking at where we are we're successful and bordering on epic but we're we're not there yet we're you know we're on the way with you now i've had epic businesses before but this particular business that's where we're headed so we're on the path with you so let me tell you how it works remember i said that we do some education hopefully you've seen some of that the P stands for planning. It's really, really hard to get where you want to go without thinking about it, without sitting down and doing some planning. You wouldn't build a house without a plan. What makes you think you can build a business without a plan? So the entry to coaching is through planning. We have something called Planning Club. And what I've figured out is there's three ways to do planning. You can do it yourself. 
it takes a long time. A lot of people don't know how to do it. A lot, most people won't do it. I've asked hundreds of people why they don't plan. I've gotten every excuse you can imagine. Don't have enough time. Don't know how all of them. It's inexpensive, but that is, and, and, but most of the, the biggest reason most people don't plan is because they just don't do it. They're too busy in their business responding to whatever is in. Now, the other way to do it is hire somebody to do it. You can pay them ten to fifty thousand dollars to build a plan. It's expensive. The problem with that is it's not really your plan, and it costs a lot of money. So we have a mid-level investment to get a plan. It takes two days. We get you out of your business. You're in a room with other business owners. It's actually fun because some people say, well, it's boring. I don't like it. The idea of planning runs me crazy. Look, it's fun. It's two days. We got tons of testimonials. It's called Planning Club. It costs $3,500 one time. You get the software. You can keep updating it. Okay? So the investment, $3,500. You need to come in through planning. Now, after planning, we're going to know a lot more about where you want to go, where you are now, and we're going to actually have chosen from the 350 strategies that we have to help people grow businesses, which program makes the most sense. Now, we have foundation program. Our foundation program generally is for people, one or two person businesses who want to grow, want to be around, want to get some outside help, want to, you know, are, are interested in growing themselves and potentially growing their business a little bit more but aren't at the point where they can invest much. It's $1,500 per month to join our foundation program. Now, what's included in that, you get one coach meeting a month and you come to our monthly, we have a monthly meeting every single month where we get all our clients together and you come to that once a month and you, you're part of the group just like everybody else, just like all our other clients, okay? Then we have Step Up. Step Up's for someone who's got a team, they're working on what we call mastery and niche strategies. So they're they're back to the six steps. They're working on mastery and niche strategies. So we're working on a lot of cash flow strategies. We're looking to get your uh, time squared away. We're looking to get some of your uh, mindset in place so that you're prepared for growth. We're getting a lot of the basics in place. Once you start expanding, then we, we would we would move you to power up. Now power up. We're mostly working on systems or leverage strategies and team strategies to build that business that can work without you. Now, we don't, once we get into planning, once you get through planning, we're going to know which one of these is best to start with. Maybe you start in foundation and work your way up. Maybe you're, 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 you're ready for step up. Maybe you're ready for power up. We have a lot of people come in at the power up level. And we've got another, we've got another level. And that's after power. Where These are the people who really, really want to scale, really, really want to grow at a high level. These are the people that are looking for more. It's a We call it Top Gun. It's the high growth mastermind. We get them together. We take them out of the meeting that we have once a month for half the day. And we get serious. We get into looking at, they're already good. In fact, a lot of them are already great, but we're going to make them better. We get into serious con, uh, conversations about their numbers, about who they need to hire, about how to help them. We just help each other. We challenge each other. We make each other better. So that really is all there is to it. Well, you probably want to know, like, what are the investments? Planning Club, as I said, $3,500 once off. It's it. If you bring another person from your business with you, it's another $500. So it could be $4,000. The foundation, $1,500. Step up, $2,500 a month. Power up, $3,500 a month. Top Gun. 5000 a month. So that's our lineup. That's our strategies. That's what we do. I hope this clarifies for you a bit what we do in coaching, how it works. The next steps would be to sit down and talk with a coach to book in for what we call a strategy session or a profitability session to or a growth session to look at your business because this is just the fundamentals. This is the stuff that applies to every business. What we like for people to look at is like, all right, where are you now? Or we're really the other way. Where do you want to go? Where are you now? We help you clarify that in this strategy session. And then we're going to go over like, we're, we're, you're going to have 10, 20 strategies 
that that will help you get there. And it's I call it a mini plan. And then from there, if it makes sense to both of us, then we figure out the best way to work. You'll get into planning and we'll and we'll figure out from there what the best place for you to join our community is. All of these people come to our community meeting every month. It's awesome. We just did one a few days ago. Um, and we'd love to have you come check it out. So if any of this makes sense, book in for a strategy session. Uh, one of our team members can get you signed up with me or one of our other coaches, and we'll take it from there. I hope you have a fantastic day. And until next time, 